When I get a new student that's at an intermediate level, they've got their basic coordination down, they can play along to songs, but they feel like something is kind of missing. One of the first things I have them do is just play a simple straight eighth note rock root. And almost every time, it comes out to be something similar to this. Now, technically, that's correct. All the notes are in the right spots. It's an eighth note rock groove. But there are a few things we could change about that to make it sound a lot better. So if you can relate to this and you feel like your groove is kind of somewhere in that territory, I'm going to give you three important things to work on that can dramatically improve your sound and feel. Step number one, balance your dynamics. If you're right hand dominant and you go to play a groove like this, it's really easy to let that right hand kind of drive the groove. But when you do that, you end up kind of bashing that hi-hat a little bit too loud and the kick and snare is a little bit too weak underneath that. So what you want to do is actually invert those dynamics and make the kick and snare really prominent and make that drive the groove forward, but lower the hi-hat volume to where it's nice and subtle underneath, but it's not jumping out and grabbing your attention. So when you do that, we go from this to this. Just that simple tweak alone can make a dramatic change in your sound. So spend some time trying to work on your dynamics and get them nice and balanced and make sure that you're not bashing too hard with that right hand on the hi-hat. Step number two, develop your rim shots. If you don't know what a rim shot is, it's just a stroke where the stick hits the center of the drum and the rim at the exact same time. And when you get it dialed in, it creates this really loud shotgun pop kind of a sound. And most students that are in that beginner to intermediate range don't yet have the precision to really lock in their rim shots and play them consistently. So what I would recommend you do is isolate that left hand and try to hit rim shots over and over for long periods of time until you get it dialed in. Once you get it dialed in and you apply it to a groove like this eighth note rock groove, all of a sudden we have a much more powerful backbeat that has more impact. As opposed to just a standard center hit. So spend some time developing your rim shots. In the beginning, it can be kind of frustrating because it's kind of like target practice in a way. Sometimes you'll hit just the center. Sometimes you'll hit just the rim. But eventually, once you work on it enough, you'll develop the precision to access it instantly. And then you can use it whenever it's appropriate. Step number three, subdivide internally. Subdivisions are the underlying time grid that everything you play needs to line up to. And the most common ones we use as drummers are going to be quarter notes, eighth notes, eighth note triplets, sixteenth notes, and sixteenth triplets. If you go right into a groove and you're not thinking very clearly about one of those subdivisions, then your time is going to be kind of all over the place and you're going to be kind of searching for the pocket. So before you even start playing, you should be thinking to yourself, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Counting it out like that gets it into your mind, but you can also get it into your body. So you can kind of sway back and forth with the pulse. You can get the eighth notes going with your right hand to kind of prepare you to play the hi-hat. And I like to bounce my heel silently on the hi-hat just to give me another kind of physical reference point to really ingrain the subdivision into my mind and my body before I even start. So if I was going to play this groove, I'd be thinking one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Two. 
when you subdivide internally like that, it gives you a really solid hold on the time. And from the first note, you're right in the pocket. Now, another thing that's pretty useful is if you need to play a slower tempo, let's say somewhere around here, At that kind of tempo, it actually helps to count a faster subdivision like 16th notes because using a faster subdivision, there's less space for your time to kind of drift around in your mind. So at this tempo, I'd be thinking one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... Now on the other end, if you need to play a faster tempo, maybe something like this. Instead of thinking one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, make it easier for yourself by only keeping track of the quarter notes to free up some headroom. So you could think one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, I hope these three steps help you out and give you some new things to work on. These are the kinds of foundational things that aren't super fancy and maybe not that fun, but if you take the time to really work on them and master them, it's gonna have a dramatic impact on your time and your sound and your feel, okay? If you wanna study more in depth with me, just head over to abbdrums.com to see more of my online courses. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.